Hello, goobers. It's me, Stephen Satani, your host and navigator of all episodes of Comedy Advice Podcast. And I am low energy today. I know. Is this low energy, Steph? Yep, that's me. Wow. How could we live with you? Well, you can because I have one spare bedroom and I'm looking for listeners. The only thing that you have to do is listen to all the episodes of a comedy advice podcast, which you're kind of doing already. You've taken the first step. And so I'm here to cheer you on, take a picture of your first step, frame it, put it in the photo album, and you are going to be part of the Satani family. And you all can do it. You all can be there, especially if you do kind things like leave a review, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, on TikTok, at a comedy advice podcast, Stefan Satani. You can be part of my tribe. And there will be some initiation processes. It's all part of the fun. Obviously, Satani, an Italian name. We have some Italian traditions, you know, becoming a man, a uomo, a real Mario, you might have to jump, you know, it's it's just, it's like a bar mitzvah for Italians. You just, you, you jump through some tubes, you have to save a princess. It's all part of the, the 2000 year old tradition of, of being Italian. But anyway, yeah, that's, that was fun. Mamma mia, you guys, I hope you're doing well. By the way, it is a, a crisp November on this day, but maybe you're listening in the summertime. Either way, I hope the temperature is just right. There are no beads of sweat dripping from your brow. I hope it's beads of tingly excitement that are just swimming up your spine as you're hearing my voice and getting ready for this engaging, amazing episode with Gavin Bloom. It was recorded a while ago. So this is a little bit of a late bloom, but Gavin Bloom does not disappoint. He unfurls his bare self and it's amazing. I do have to blur it out because he's completely naked for all of you video viewers, but it's it's beautiful how he bears his soul as well. And, and his soul's nipples do get a little hard, but they are marvelous and we talk about all things comedy and he's a great person i feel like our chemistry is on point as they say in french on point and we just ch we chat it up we yak it up lots of yakking just so much yak you'd think it was a farm over here and i am so happy to present this episode to you guys i hope you enjoy it and don't ask for a refund even though it's free you know it's free so subscribe leave a review leave a comment follow me <clears throat> those are the kind things that you guys can do in return that's like a tip so i'm here i'm your waiter i'm making sure you're having a good time i am going to come in, in you know intermittently in the episode and be like can i get you anything else can i get you some water and your tip is, is being able to subscribe, comment, leave a review. Come see me live. I've got a show the 14th of December, Trash or Treasure. It's going to be at the House of Comedy. Link will be in the show notes. You guys can come there. Follow Gavin as well. Show him some support. Don't be all doom and gloom. Be doom and bloom or bloom and gloom. Whatever you want to be, but the combination has to have a bloom in it. So be there with the bloom and... Don't sweep it away with a broom. Yeah, follow him, show him some support. He and I are going to do a project as well, which I'm really excited about. My eyebrow was moving oh so sensually for all of you guys that are just listening. So I wanted to describe it to you. And other than that, I just want to let you guys enjoy the show. So I'm going to stop talking now and start talking from the past. <laughs> Were we not recording? We were not recording audio on the Zoom recorder. No. You could, you would think that with all the episodes I had recorded, I might have a system and process, but I don't. It's all just uh, living life one day at a time. I mean, life would be boring if you didn't have to kind of relearn the things you already know. Yeah, I guess that's true. And I, this is my fourth podcast episode this week. Oh. So I've just been, it's been a marathon. Busy. I had Ali Sadiq and he was very, very nice. Very good gentleman. I think he's performing at Stand Up Live this weekend. Okay. Steve Ranazizi from, if you ever saw the show, The League. Yeah. 
He was Kevin MacArthur. Okay. Horrible guest. No, I'm kidding. He was really good. He was very fun. You would never tell me <laughs> if you had a horrible guest. <laughs> I would well behind the scenes we'll talk. Yeah, we'll be like talk. Gavin, let me tell you about this guy. Yeah, or we might do code. He was great. And oh, yeah, then yeah, yeah. You get the code. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, he was really good. And then this is the second time we had been this is behind the scenes talking the talking shop for a comedy advice podcast. Oh, I forget the camera. Should should I look into the camera too? All the time. And, and do like Don't look at me, just look straight at the camera. Yeah, yeah. If you could do that more robotic. Hello, Stefan. I am your <laughs> guest. I feel like Whitney Cummings now, because didn't she have a sex robot? Not that you're a sex robot. You're not just a piece of metal. You know what? I've never been called a sex robot before. Okay. But. Does it sound good? Thank you. You're, you're quite welcome. I that, thought I. That is one of the nicest, uh, most optimistic names or references I've ever been called or referenced to. I think it allows you now that you were called that once to be able to put it on your Tinder profile. Some Hell, have called that, me. That means I can get a Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Well, good. I'm glad I got you a bolt of energy here and motivation yeah. and uh, building that self-esteem with, you know, nuts and bolts. Whatever goes into a sex robot. Yeah, whatever. And bolts, goes oh. in, which is usually yes, the ingredients in a good sex robot. And yeah, we'll keep on trucking at a comedy advice podcast. Special guest today, by the way, boys and girls, and men and women and mole people. Gavin Bloom joining us today, extra special comedian based out of his apartment. That's right, uh, in Scottsdale. Oh, it's Scottsdale yes. fancy. Yeah. I'm going to kind of just sprinkle in more details throughout the episode, I think. You're a good storyteller. Yeah. I could tell. Thank you. That's great. And you know what? You're a great comedian as well. And you were one of the first people to dive into the Trash or Treasure show. Yes. At the House of Comedy. Next show is October 19th, Tuesday, 730. Link is in the show notes. But you did a phenomenal job. You were the winner. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Stefan, for the opportunity <laughs> and uh, for, for being one half of the, of the winning duo. Oh. Because uh, it was Hannah. Yes. Right? Who, who won the other round. Right? Hannah, yes. Hannah Ty, which I had pronounced her name incorrectly 75% of the show. Yeah. And then she went in because I called her Hannah Teague. It's spelled T-I-G-H-E. Well, you know, we all make mistakes. Uh, she, she thinks my dick is blue. That's correct. And yeah. I never said that. Did you set the record straight? I mean, I don't think that she I don't think she wanted to hear it. And you know what they say about ignorance being bliss? Like if if she wants to think that and that keeps her in a happy place, who am I to ruin such a such a such a, a an, an imagery? Yes, I agree. For her. I mean, for some people, the world is black and white, but for others, it's it's blue. Multi, so, multicolored, yeah. And a healthy blue, not like bruised or anything. Th definitely not, no. I yeah. mean, I don't know if a sex robot even bruises, so <laughs> it would just be... You know what's ironic about a sex robot? This will bring a tear to you. They don't, they don't feel. Man, that's starting to show... Man, the feelings that you had for Hannah calling your dick blue makes me think that... Your AI is just kicking into gear and you're learning? I think so. You, did you ever see uh, uh, Avengers Age of Ultron? I did see Bicentennial Man. Oh. With Robin Williams. Oh, that's great because they're, these are two different movies. <laughs> but practically <laughs> the same thing, right? Because they both, well, I think Bicentennial Man was the first trans robot to human because he oh. was robot. And then I think he completely transformed. Oh, well, um, Ultron never became a human, but he just kind of became aware. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. He got consciousness, and then he became more robot. Like, yeah. He became physical robot. And he's like, why am I the only robot? There should be more robots and less humans. Agre yeah. yeah. And, and uh, so kind of, I'm the only sex robot. There should be more sex robots. I you know what it. I mean? I get it. Yeah. I think Ultron wanted that, too. I, I think he would. Yeah. I think he would. 
I think a couple. I saw a couple sex robots in the infantry that he had commandeered. Oh, you know it. Created. You know it, dude. Yeah. If he's creating his okay, where are we going with this? We're going because <laughs> if he's creating his own robots, like yeah, but created in his, his image, so. He's becoming aware of more than one thing. I'm becoming aware of more than one thing. <laughs> <I think. laughs> and that is the purpose of this podcast. That's so I'm great. glad we're getting there and uh, in a robotic way. So we're going to keep on moving along with some special segments here before we get into the questions and answer them. Um, I like to get inspired with an inspirational quote. Okay. Now, I know... Sex robots need no stimulation whatsoever, but I want to try and see if, now that you're feeling inklings of human feelings, Ooh. I want to see if I can stimulate that inspiration. I like where this is going. This is Yeah, you're speaking to me, man. Let's, let's do this. This is going really well. And to ease you into it, oh, this quote is none other than by a robot called Inspirobot. And so it uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to Mang and then it just mashes them together for a juicy, inspirational quote. I'm a big fan of Spider-Bot. And I was going to ask, too, do you, Gavin Bloom, do you have any inspirational quotes that you live by? Yes. Oh. I do. Oh. Uh, w w would you like to hear it, Stefan? No, I just wanted to ask. So Inspire-Bot, no, I'm kidding. I'd love to hear a quote or two from Gavin Bloom. Please, tell me your faves. Top 20. No, that's too uh, much. Top two. Mandela... Nelson Mandela said, uh, let there be peace. Let there be peace for all. I thought that was pretty neat. And uh, Very neat. Top yeah. notch. Yeah, really good. I I remembered it, you know? That's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, but my favorite one is one that I, I use at my my nine to five oh. to try and inspire my coworkers and employees to not let the small stuff get to them. Okay. And it is by Winston Churchill. Nice. Nice. It says, Very nice. Tact is the ability to tell someone to go to hell in such a way that he looks forward to the trip. Ooh, churchy. At it again. Dropping a bomb. The gospel, if you will, from yeah. churchy. Oh, man. I love Winston Churchill. I don't remember any of his quotes verbatim, mm. but they're so snappy. They're so good. It's just like, it's like a ginger snap. You just get Man. that first snap and then the flavor comes in and it seeps into your taste buds and you're just like, mm, that was tasty. You have amazing analogies for treats. <laughs> 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 yeah, people call me the trick or treat because I just keep on tricking <laughs> with treats. That's how I roll. And I don't, it's somebody pointed out that it's a lot of food metaphors and I guess I'm just a hungry, hungry guy. It's not even food metaphors. It's like, it's, it's the, the warm granny goodness treats like the sweet stuff. Oh, okay. you know, I, 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 like I said, I've, I've listened to, to your podcast before and your openers yeah. are always, they're so enjoyable because you're just going in your your Stefan stream of consciousness, and oh. somehow there's something magically delicious involved. Mm. And mm. I I say it magically delicious. There's something. It's it's like there's sprinkles on it, lots of sugar, yeah. none of that high fructose stuff, but like natural sugar, you know. That that cane sugar. The that cane I just, sugar. Oh yes, what a beautiful description as well. I don't know if that was in, initially in your programming, but I'm feeling romanced. Right now, slightly, well, we'll talk, we'll talk after show, but no, that was fantastic. And I appreciate that because one, you listen to a couple episodes, which is awesome. Usually guests, they just come on and they don't know who I am. They call me Steven and uh, it just goes from there. But I also was wondering, should I keep going with the intros? Should I keep skipping into that Steph stream or should I just go right into the episode? And that you, you validated me a little bit to keep going with those intros Keep them coming. Sugar, sugarcoat the episode. You know, Stefan, I'm glad you asked me this because uh, as a sex robot, obviously, uh, you you got to ease people into the episode like a warm hug. Mm. Okay. Yes. Into the soft and moistened crevasse oh. that is My Stefan whole. Satani's 
brain, but yes, your whole, <laughs> your whole, uh, by by stimulating and tantalizing the the senses with your vocabulary. Mm, I oh my gosh, that I, couldn't have been put more beautifully. I just have to moisten the lips or and and open up the hole just a little bit so people can be comfortable fitting inside you are like of me you are like first light to a budding flower and you're just teasing it with that vitamin d oh. just teasing it saying hey hey little flower are you ready are you ready for my podcast yes oh. you are and then before you know it flower opens up oh my gosh it just opens up dude just a couple buds of dew and some sunlight, and these flowers are all over the place. It's like a little garden, not in Phoenix, because we don't have any. But no, things die here. But things... other than that, yeah, the oh, analogy works, though. That's beautiful. You're so welcome. My, my lovely meadow of an episode is just opened up with that first break of dawn, a.k.a. my baritone voice saying, hello! So that's... That makes me feel very special. Thank you, Gavin. Hey, my pleasure. And thank you for those those quotes, too. I really like the Churchill one. Mandel was okay. Mm. But no, no. To be fair, though, they were both great quotes. I just feel I'm, I'm a church guy. I'm a Churchill guy. You're a Churchill guy. Churchill guy. You're going to die on that Churchill. I am going to die. <laughs> I used to go to school. Churchill both ways. All right, moving on. So this quote... <laughs> This comes with a picture, which Gavin and I can see. It's Spirobot. It generates a picture backdrop and puts the quote. This was not me that did any of this. It says, all you need in order to create a masterpiece is a name and a boy. And that's all you would expect more. Also, for the listeners and people that cannot see this image, it is a very muscular man. And you can only see, you can't see the neck up. You just see the torso, one arm, and the abs, the pecs. And then it goes right below. Don't worry, it does not show. <laughs> but it goes dangerously close to the, the blue zone, as At we'll call it. At least this this model has the decency to cover up his nether regions. Correct. I am so thankful. Inspirebot is thinking of us. There, it doesn't want to traumatize. It wants to inspire. So it's like I'll just I'll give just enough to not give you nightmares for the rest of your life. I'm I'm kind of wondering how the quote would have sounded if I didn't see the image. Like, would it have changed the dynamic of of the quote? Oh, true. Because he looks like a big boy, an adult, and the boy is in the quote. Is that what you're thinking? No. No. <laughs> no. I was thinking, you know, uh, um, rather misogynist, I guess, this quote. Uh, I yeah. Yes, I think so. All you need in order to create a masterpiece is a name and a boy. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. Why would a girl not do the trick? Uh, where do boys come from? Hello? Girls. Right. That's. I think that was part of your winning argument, too, right? When you were arguing on <laughs> Trash or Treasure. <laughs> Was it moms versus dads? It was moms versus dads. And you totally nailed it. I did. You did, you did great. I, did. I think I also get a little bit of pedo vibes from a name and oh, a boy. for sure. Uh, all you need in order to create a masterpiece is a name and a boy. Mm. Pedophile is a name. And a boy is the game. That's right. <laughs> That's, That's right, Stefan. You got it's, it. It's not a good game, <laughs> no. but it's a game. No, it's a, it's a game the pedophiles like to play. That's right. That's right. It's like when you were at a house party and somebody's like, do you want to play Risk? And you're like, nope, I don't like that game. And uh, that's <laughs> kind of like pedophiles. <laughs> that's pedophilia in a nutshell. So maybe I'll take a little, I'll take a left turn. Yeah. Maybe this is saying, Inspirebot's trying to grasp, it's trying to branch out and it's just not quite getting there. The roots are not hitting the, the water, so it's not growing, but I'm going to try and just feed it a little bit from okay. the stem of my bucket. And I think it's saying a name and a boy, you need to tap into, you need to get deep inside your inner child. Oh. And that way you can really create masterpieces. Yeah. A name and a... See, I like where your mind's going because it's not cynical. Fair. And uh, mine, both of them, very cynical and that's the age that we live in but 
I can I can see where you're going with this. You just need to know who you are. That I can that I can get down with. Uh, and a boy. I am. Like what? Like a helper or? Um. Maybe maybe like a uh somebody to encourage you, a a boy somebody that can that can hype you up, like a hype boy. Oh. I think yeah. that's what they're called. Boys are filled with piss and vinegar, aren't they? Correct. Do, do they even say that anymore? That, Winston Churchill, I think, said that. I think he might have. <laughs> you know, um, we'll never surrender. Yeah, whatever he says. <laughs> but yeah, maybe you're right because they got you know they got all these all this energy. Boys are shameless. Right. Right. So you just need you just need some boy to say, "Hey, that's a masterpiece," and then you got it made. There you go. How else do things get viral, right? Not without boys. Yeah. All right. I'm I glad think we, we cracked can, the code. <laughs> we cracked this one wide open, and uh, I think this quote is for the boys. So we can move on. Thank <laughs> God that this image uh, stops there. So we're going to get into questions. Great. We got this first question. It says sneaky drug services. This person says, I've recently taken in a recovering drug addict family member, and I want to know all of the sneaky ways she will try to get drugs into my house. I have already caught her twice with whippets, and I'm sure she's coming up with plenty more ways to fool me. I hear there are food services that will deliver drugs as well. I'm just trying to cover my bases. Wow. Hmm. This is, first off, let's give a round of applause to this person for taking a drug addict and putting them in their house i mean not like a real round of applause don't do that but like you know a a, a tip of the hat perhaps metaphorically Noble. yes uh, i agree i don't know if i would do that if i'm being honest with you and also with like the you know the fool me once you know fool me twice kind of uh shtick like she this person's been fooled a few times yes and still there for uh for their family i i can't yeah. i can't uh is there any any indication of uh of gender for the, the the creator of this question? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know because uh, I've recently taken it. There's no hints of masculinity or femininity okay. in any of this. I just it's I all want fluid, to be respectful. Fair, you know. Fair. Um, also, if I before before we get into the meat and potatoes of this, sure. Uh, where do you come by your questions? Oh, so that's a great question, actually. That's the next question we have. Oh. No, it's uh, – <laughs> so I usually – they either come in from fans or they send them in from the Reddit advice column. I love so it. So these are all either Reddits or Ridges, originals. I love it. Yeah. Love they've it. all got ridges because they've, they've got peaks and valleys just like this one. But, man – they're they're all equally delicious in my no I've got look favorites. at you yeah see what I'm saying oh man it's happening it's yeah, happening yeah. I feel well yeah let's let's stay on track yeah, let's, let's follow talk this about the sneaky drug services oh gosh so second. have you uh, I have not had anybody addicted to any drugs in my family besides caffeine mm. I was recently talking with my brothers about this we had a brunch on Sunday. It was a brunch of brothers, and we ended up talking about us being anxious because of caffeine. And so we ended up, my brother was telling me, I drink two bangs a day. And I was like, two bangs a day? Have you ever have you ever drank a bang? Yeah. Okay. How much, well, well okay, well, how much caffeine do you drink, Gavin? Uh, too much. Too much. Probably. Okay. But yeah, I mean, honestly, it's, it's sickening, sickening levels, you know? But from a fellow, a fellow nine to fiver, like you understand, you understand what it feels like to need that extra something to get you through. And it's not even so much the caffeine to perk me up. It's just like, oh, it's something to do. I'm going to drink this tasty yes. beverage and, and then it's going to unlock uh, something in my mind that makes me think that I'm more productive now, but I'm, I'm really more sleepy, but at least I've enjoyed you know, a tasty beverage of some kind. 
Yes. But uh, yes. I, I was just I was just smiling at you a second ago because I, I just couldn't get over a brunch of brothers. <laughs> I, just... <laughs> I could tell. I didn't know if you were going to crack or not. But I... <laughs> a brunch of brothers about bangs. <laughs> <laughs> it was indeed a delight. <laughs> yeah. Um, until we got kicked out because they closed. But anyway, two, other than two that. Two bangs, though. It was two bangs. Two bangs. Two bangs. Mm. My brother was telling me about his bangs. And I told him there are, I thought there were 200 milligrams of caffeine in one bang. But there's actually 300. 300. That's right. It's I, a, it, a bang. It really, I feel like the name is so fitting. It's fitting. It's not like Kapow. Kapow no. would have 200 Kapow is like the CD knockoff that you find in the dollar store. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, Kapow. They should, I mean, the Bang Inc. Corporation should probably have different action cans. Totally. For If you don't want to bang, then you can have a boom. And a pow. And, and a, a biff. And anything that was on the Batman show. I like that. Yeah, I right? love that. Yes. Because the statute of limitations for, for copyright's got to be done by now. Right? Oh, I, they can take Biff Bang Pow, right? I think as long as, is Adam West dead? Because I think he was the original Batman. So as long yes. as he's out of the picture. He is. Although, to be fair, I don't think he wrote any of the scripts. That the is Batman very TV show. fair. That is very fair. He just <laughs> said the shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I also feel like a Biff should be decaf. That sounds Ooh. like a decaf one to me. Or what if a Biff is a surprise <laughs> oh it's like a mystery it's a mis is this decaf or not you'll find out and then the ones that are caffeinated oh i got a biff yeah. i love that it's like russian roulette for corporate america yes you just crack open a biff and then you can't tell by the whiff but can't tell if it's a biff by the whiff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this sells itself. <laughs> oh my god, it, it it really does, man. I th I feel like I smell some merch coming on. Mm. So get on mm. that copyright, man. Yes. Get on it. Oh man. So I think we helped this person in some way. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say this uh, in Please. relation to this. So uh, first of all noble very noble we agree fair yes agreed you, you're agreed. there for your family you love your family yes and you're willing to put up with a lot of shit because you knew what this was yes when you took a recovering drug addict into your family yeah uh i want to know all the sneaky ways she will try to get drugs okay you don't you're not giving her that much of the benefit of the doubt though right right like be supportive right, right. you know your 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 thoughts become things. If you suspect her, she's gonna start doing crazy stuff, right? Um, Damn. And then and then at the very end, here's a sneaky way. Be careful that she doesn't somehow get you to provide the drugs, because oh. that's sneaky, right? That's super sneaky. And then you're the last one to know. You're like, wait a minute, it was me. She got me to do it. Holy shit. Gavin Shyamalan. That was like they don't want to be the Bruce Willis of this story where they're like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. I'm selling the drugs. That's right. And I'm dead. That's right. And I'm dead. And <laughs> and and <laughs> going full circle, like I've I've got this boy. I've got a boy. <laughs> Ironically, Gavin, I think you've just created a masterpiece. There it is. Of, there, of a story. There it is. This is great. <laughs> All right. We're going to move on to this next segment. This is a relatively new one. I only do it with the people oh, that I great. feel like could do a good job of it. And I had Zach Lyman do the first, and you're going to be the second. So oh. this is called Product Placement. So what I've done is I've taken some of the silliest products from Amazon that I could find, and I'm going to give you three options from those products. I'm going to give you three scenarios. And each scenario, you're going to pick which product you could use to make that a little bit better. Does that make sense? So you get three products. You get a cup of water. You, no, you know what? It'll just make sense. We're going to dive right into it. All right. So the products, the first one is a lifelike elephant inflatable. All right. I've also attached a description here. It, it features realistic, colorful in-print baby elephant with long nose, big ears, and big expressive eyes. 
popular circus animal, easy to travel and take anywhere. So this is like a a three foot inflatable elephant. You know, I feel I feel some kinship with this lifelike inflatable el- uh, elephant because before you read the description, yes. I imagined it was exactly like what you described. Oh my goodness. Well, I didn't even have to open the trunk <laughs> to get that. <laughs> All right. Oh. Stomping on to the next one. Yes. Meet Shredder Claws. Oh, I saw those on Amazon. Oh, you did? Okay. I did. Okay. So these are heavy duty stainless steel meat claws designed for handling larger pieces of meat. They can grab, lift, or shred roasts and other large pieces of meat. Shred a smoked pork butt into a pulled pork in a matter of minutes. Wow. 2021, everybody. 2021. It's the future. It's They they look pretty... I don't know if I would ever use them, but I, it does look pretty cool. And it gives you it gives you a glimpse into the life of Wolverine. It, it, yes. How, how do you not look at those? And then the first thing that comes to your mind is... This is a weapon, right? Oh, and I can cook. I can make. I can prepare meat dishes with this as well. <laughs> pulled pork, here I come, bub. And yeah. Then just... But how did you? Th- how do you think that pulled pork got here? It's because you know we had some minced words. That's oh! say? So we minced <laughs> oh! with our fists and my iron steel. And thing. we had to claw out of there, but we did it. I feel like you. Okay, so this is where I'm thinking now. You got them on. Yeah. They look cool. But then when it comes time to mince that meat, then you're going to look like a dork because yes. you're going to go like this and yes. you're going to paw at it like a cat yes. pawing at a cricket. So it's not going to look very cool. Th- that being said, we'll move on to the next. The last item is a taco Ooh. sleeping bag. This fleece-like sleeping bag is ideal for snuggling into, while the plush crust makes the perfect finishing touch. (laughs) Never thought I'd hear those words right next to each other. Not just for lounging on the couch. This blanket is also great for sleepovers, parties, gifts, camping, and car trips. The weight and fabric provides enough warmth in the winter, yet is breathable in the summer for a perfect year-round necessity. My goodness. You need this taco sleeping bag. You know, there's nothing there's nothing I enjoy more than cozying up inside a warm taco. I I agree. I you know Wait, wait, I, wait, wait. I, <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> I love nothing more than making my way in wriggling mm. into a plush crust. It's just mmm. <sighs> <laughs> can't wait just my whole body just sliding a right plush in there crust the plush crust if that's not a band name i plush don't know what crust? It is. plush crust i mean it could be in japan or if it could be a pizza hut item plush Ooh. crust pizza Pl- Oof. that just <laughs> rolls off the tongue plush crust pizza Mm-mm. that's the name of a restaurant Oh yeah, and they've got it. The plush is created by the consistency of a certain cheese, probably Taleggio cheese, Ooh. perhaps. I was thinking plush crust pizza. That's the name of it, right? Yes. I was thinking it's like a, a clever name for a sex shop. Oh, plush crust. The crust really. Yeah, and they're I'm... like, "Well, why is it called pizza?" Yeah, it's pretty clever, huh? huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't know. Plush crust pizza, I don't. Know. But like, tell me more about the about this cheese. Mm, Taleggio cheese. It's yeah. like a brie, but Ooh. it's got this sandpapery edge. So oh. it's nothing like plush. Now that I think about no. it, I just wanted to brag and say that I know Taleggio. I was doing a name drop, so I'm I was, impressed. I was trying to be bold and daring to go there, but it ended up failing. <laughs> Did and you say dairying? I to did. Go there? I yes. did. I did. <laughs> oh, it's one of my many curdles uh, to hop curdles? through. God. All right. So these are the three items. We're gonna go through the scenarios. Okay. The first scenario is you get you're about to get mugged. Okay. You're, you're down one of those dangerous alleys in Scottsdale. Oh yeah, yeah. And a bro in a popped collar says, Bro, give me all your Bitcoin. And you have one of these items to make that situation better. You've got the taco sleeping bag. You've got the meat shredder claws. Mm-hmm. And you've got the lifelike elephant inflatable. So I just have to pick one? Yeah, you just, yeah. 
Well, obviously, it's going to be the meat shredder claws. That sounds like a very logical right? response. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I'll be like, um, trying to think of something funny to say with meat claw. I could, <laughs> I I could say um, uh, meat shredder claws. I could say, shing, motherfucker. I don't know. I, <laughs> shing, motherfucker. <laughs> and just have these these shredder claws in my pockets and I just pull them out because they look kind of like brass knuckles in the way they that do. they're, they're kind of shaped. So you they just do. hold the handles. I think if I, they, they might tear up your legs and quad muscles oh, if they're in your pockets. Sure. So yeah. what I would do is probably wear them like a necklace oh. as Frodo did with his ring that he, he had to bear yeah. as he trekked to uh, Mordor. So mm -hmm. you could just have them, hanging around or or like flavor flav except instead of a giant ass clock it's meat claws so you know that what? way is expense is, is money an issue money is scenario? no issue in this scenario well then fuck it i'm getting them surgically implanted into uh the palms of my hands nice yeah because Very everybody nice. is gonna think that you know i want to be wolverine like i'm a nerd or something but no <laughs> palms dude nobody's gonna see that coming slapping people not at all down. uh especially popped collared bros in no. Scottsdale, where I live, around the, uh, Chaparral in the 101. Oh, that's very... Oh, look at that. Slowly sprinkling in. Mm. Mm. This flower is indeed budding. This I feel guy. like, man, it's it's about to bloom over and here. And all the bees are invited. Oh. <laughs> it's about to bloom. Is that... Uh, that was a... That was a... Yeah. That was a hat tip Gosh, to your, your fantastic I, surname. I think I've met my match in puns. Here. We might have to do a pun podcast we might this might have to be a thing oh my god i i would be i would i would be honored honored as would i my dear friend and sex robot well and, you're not my sex robot but you're a sex robot i can be we can we can make it work <laughs> the podcast will be real interesting all we need is as a boy. long as you know as long as i don't have to do anything sexual <laughs> yeah, i think <laughs> I can be your sex robot. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we can reprogram it. All right, so we've got the next scenario. You have to tell your friend that you made plans with that you can't hang out with them because you found better plans. Okay. You already used the meat claws. Yeah. You can use them again. Why not? You can use whatever ones you, know you what? want. I'm going to play this game the proper way. Okay. I'm going to make you proud, Stefan. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going with the elephant. The elephant. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's because you want to talk about the elephant in the room? <laughs> Damn! That would be... Okay, I might have to buy this elephant now. <laughs> People are going to hate me. You know, that chair that that is not being used right now, you just have that elephant on that chair and, uh, and just uncomfortably stare at your guest. What? Something on your mind? What? 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 I could give it a microphone and everything too. You want to oh. talk about the elephant in the room? Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> oh damn. Okay, so the elephant in the room. Or, yeah. I'm sorry, the elephant. You you would go with the elephant. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because if I were to put off plans with a friend because yes. I found better plans, and it happened to be that elephant, I clearly do not like this friend. Mmm. And uh. Either that or I'm I'm really amused by this elephant. And that I mean that just that just holds stock in my in my time, in my calendar, you know? So I um I think I think it would be it would be the elephant because at least I can pretend like the elephant is another person who gets me. Oh okay? I like that. Yeah. I like that. Because the elephant doesn't talk, but it says what I think it wanted to say. The elephant, especially since it's a baby elephant, as we read in the description, mm. that could be your boy. That's my boy. Together. Masterpiece. We can create one. Oh, we can trick. You know what I can do is I can uh, attach a paintbrush to the trunk, tape it, and then I will use the elephant as a paintbrush to paint something, you know, awkwardly. Oh, oh my God. Beautiful. And if you want, you can also tape to its its feet the meat claws so then you can use it to be able to make meat masterpieces master pie is that the plural meat, of masterpiece i think meat master pie is the way to go 
Sounds a little pretentious, <laughs> but I think we should go there. Meat master pie, the plural of meat master pieces. Peace. Yes, yes. It sounds a little upper crust, but it's not plush. So I think <laughs> we are on to something here. <laughs> Moving on to the last scenario. You, so many treats. You have to give a best man speech at a wedding. This is not necessarily a negative scenario. And um, I think all you have left is the taco sleeping bag. But um, we can cut, we can sprinkle in some more details there. You have to give a best man speech at a wedding that uh, you don't really know the guy very well. You're lacking some details, good anecdote, funny story. Well, it, it just so happens that the taco sleeping bag is the, the last choice, but it's the perfect choice. Oh. Because I could just, uh, you know, I could just go up in front of everybody with the microphone and... Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't have time to prepare anything. I, I, I've just been sleeping inside of a taco. <laughs> it's the perfect excuse. Uh, and anybody I, who says that, you you kind of don't want them to keep talking, do you? You don't. You don't. And if you want to just stay in that mm. plush crust and you can be like, guys, I still just haven't come out of my shell. And then... <laughs> they'll all groan and then you can just walk off. Yeah. So... I feel and, like, but not before I uh, I grab the microphone again and be like, "Best man, woo!" <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to Darren and Marine, woo! <laughs> Best man, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I feel like you nailed it. Thanks. So, Gavin, well done. Flying colors. Thank you. And we're gonna move on to the last question. It says, "Need help with a polite response to, I miss you." And the feeling isn't reciprocated. I have new and old co-workers dropping hints that they want to hang out. But the truth is, I have no interest in spending additional time with them. I don't want to say something I don't mean like, OMG, I miss you too. And I don't want to keep dodging them. I'm sorry, I've just been busy. How do I go about this without hurting feelings and making things awkward in the office? Okay. Okay. Uh, new and old co-workers. Okay. Mm. So you don't have to worry about things getting awkward in the office for the old coworkers. Oh, correct. So you good could, observation. You could do the uh, uh, the new phone who dis. Oh, you, you could do that. Have you ever done that? Only on purpose as a joke. <laughs> oh, got it. Got yeah. it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> you know, everybody knows that line. You don't actually use it for real, right? True. So, <laughs> so that's going to make the old coworkers feel like, oh, this guy uh, just can't come up with anything, you know, creative. He needs a boy. He needs a boy, basically, to needs... create a masterpiece of excuses. Um, <laughs> Maybe two boys. Oh, well, a now listen. That's all you need to say, <laughs> right there. <laughs> I need boys. No. I got two boys. <laughs> it's completely out of context. And we know that when you read text messages these days, because they don't have tonal inflection sometimes, right. especially when there's no punctuation, right? you just kind of leave it up to them. And maybe they don't want to hang out with you anymore. Mm, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So just be, uh, just be completely yourself. And um, say some stuff that just might be a little off-putting to them. Or um, contextually ambiguous. True. But if you do say, like, I got two boys. And then they're like, oh, yeah? Let's hang out. Then, you, yeah, maybe you're sending the wrong message. But, yeah, maybe uh, in that case, yeah. I don't know. Um, just be like, sorry, I don't share. These are my boys. These are my boys. These are my boys. You these, can't be these our are, boys. These are, I got two boys. You would be an extra boy. I don't need three boys. Because I got my boys. Because I got my bo Yeah. I got two boys. My boys. I, I feel like we keep saying it, and it's starting to make more sense. So I think if you keep texting it, then it'll make more sense. <laughs> so, so this is what you got to do. <laughs> you text it, right? Right. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't know... Um, can you see the text bubbles uh, 
oh like when, when, someone's when, when someone's writing you know is it only if you have an iphone to an iphone or an android to an android mm, i think so I think uh, that's, that's the a case. shame yeah uh because yeah you want you want to you want to just immediately respond with with urgency you know don't play it cool and like leave your phone for like 15 minutes oh, i'll get back to it later you know right no, no. right right they're like hey man you want to hang out i got boys you just say it right there and then wait like maybe two three seconds start typing again say it again I got boys Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Now th now they think you're crazy. And then, and yeah, and then you can wiggle yourself out of it. You don't even need to do anything anymore. Beautiful. Right. Oh, my gosh. Unless you're just that awesome where y you have old coworkers being like, sure, he's worth it. Let's let's make this happen still, you know? Then I, in, in that case, I would say do do not stop. Just keep texting I got boys until they stop. Stefan, can I ask you something? You may. Anything. Anything. Imagine that we lived in a world where you could tell the truth. <sighs> what a world that would be. Right? And it yeah. and it's not necessarily it's not necessarily going to be taken as a personal offense. Mm. It's not meant with malice. Okay. How would that how would you respond to this if you lived in a world where the truth was acceptable and the person on the other end was mature enough to understand where you are? Oh, that's an excellent, excellent question, Gavin. I think how I would well, not to be fully honest, but kind of to decide to deflect, I would probably if they said, Oh my god, I miss you, I'd be like, I'd miss me too. Ha 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 ha, and then they'd be like ha 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 ha. So then that would kind of get out of it, unless they're like, "But really, do you yeah, miss me?" But but but, but seriously, when are we hanging to, out? Yeah. But to get yeah, but to get if I was to be really honest, be like, "I'm sorry, I don't poo where I eat." Wow. Yeah. So I just don't mix that. Sorry, man. What you call a kitchen, I call my bathroom. Is what you're saying. Right. And I pinch loaves there that I don't pinch in the yeah. old the old oven. You yeah. Know? I bake loaves in the oven, pinch them in the toilet. Yeah. And I pinched you last time we worked together, so right. it's time to flush. So you're going to go swirl, girl, and uh, well, or boy, or, or, whatever. Yeah. You're going down. Sounds like you need a boy. You need if, if they say I miss you, it sounds like you need a boy. Have you made any master pie lately? Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got a boy. <laughs> because I've got a boy that you should really meet. Got... That'll that'll tell him. And then you give him the elephant. Yeah. The boy. The boy elephant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we keep stomping on these questions with our advice, and it's beautiful. We're making an imprint. So I feel like people they can follow that trail. And speaking of, I know, Gavin, you have created quite the trail, becoming a pioneer, having all these shows oh. in Phoenix. And I wanted to ask, well, actually, whoa, 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 let me backtrack. Let me actually step back in the prints that I had made and say, Gavin, the, thank you so much the, for joining this podcast. It's the people who are listening to this and not watching, I feel bad for them that they could not see what you just did with your hands. Oh, I know. I know. It is illegal in 19 states. I, I loved it. Yeah. It was I beautiful. I feel bad for them. Sorry. For, for all the listeners, I actually pulled out a pair of the meat claws <laughs> that I had purchased on Amazon and I just pawed the air. I cut the tension and it's it's just it. loosey goosey it's, over here. Absolutely. Anything I, can happen. I'm I, drinking water over yeah, here. Oh, man. We are <laughs> nice and moist on the inside mm. and ready. Slaked. To just slaked? Is yeah. that a word? Yes, it is, my friend. That's a one, That's a wonderful word. Slaked? Mm -hmm. Does that mean as wet as a lake? It could. <laughs> okay. I mean, if that, if that helps you remember. It's, uh, a, it's a great mnemonic for it, me. It's what happens when you alleviate parchment in your is it parchment? That sounds like paper. <laughs> That's paper. That's paper. Uh, well, when your throat is parched oh, and you okay. take a drink, 
Ah, when you quench, when you thirst. quench that thirst, I've slaked my thirst. That's what that is. Oh I don't think I'm going to get anybody to come to my comedy shows now. I think I think <laughs> you're doing a great, great job. And um, I I think I was going to make an L.A. Slakers joke, but I'm going to go past that and just keep on swimming to the plugs. And speaking of plugs, Gavin, what have you got going on? Where can people follow you? What would you like to plug? Okay, well, uh, people following me is, it's weird. <laughs> right? And and yeah, like whether it's physically or it's on Instagram, it's kind of weird. Having said fair, that, fair. Uh, Gavin Bloom Comedian is a handle on Instagram. And um, I have access to that handle. So so I can, I usually post things through that handle. And you, you got a good handle on it. I got a good handle on it. on the on the Instagram <laughs> handle, and if you if you follow me, I'll see that. Get a little creeped out, but but a little flattered. And you know what? I I I totally I follow you. I think you're great at posting on social media, especially with your your dates for all of the women you go out with. It's great to see. I'm like, oh, date night. He's on a gondola this time. This is fantastic. You, you, <laughs> you big sweetie. You know what? <laughs> and, and I will stress that it's so important. If there are any boys listening, please follow Gavin. <laughs> mostly oh the boys oh my goodness this, this didn't go the way I was expecting <laughs> <laughs> at all uh, <laughs> um, hmm. how, do you, how do you feel like that's a good place to end <laughs> so to... I, I'll, I'll be at uh, Improv Mania this uh, Saturday night I believe that's the 9th nice. of October nice. at 9pm and uh, yeah, I'm, I've I've taken to making silly little twenty second videos on Instagram, and those are kind of fun for me now. They're pretty good. Thank you. They're very, especially uh, what I'm noting is who is posting just a, a flyer or something, which is fantastic. I'm not complaining about that at all. But then who's going beyond that and being really creative and just posting if they're promoting their dates or something and you had said one that i watched yesterday that was especially funny and about i can't remember it so yeah. i guess it wasn't that great but so good it was, it was you would have had to been there yeah. and you you can be if you follow yeah. gavin oh gavin it was so funny you, you would have loved it gavin uh, <laughs> I, I can't remember what it was what it was but you were in it you were there and your mouth was moving yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and i was just i was there for it, it was mission great. accomplished so good. So all you boys and boys, oh my be God. sure to follow <laughs> Gavin. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. This was a, an awesome time. Dude, my pleasure. You are a lovely guy, a oh. great human being. I'm glad to know you. And oh. thanks for having me. Oh, just warming my little old heart. Maybe it's a big heart. I might. It's a it's a plush crust of it's a heart. It's a plush, my plush crust of a heart. Yeah. Oh. I hope I don't get a plush crust coronary because I would... hope not. Uh, that that sounds messy. Oh man. Well, all right. Well, we're gonna clean up this mess and leave you guys to ruminate. And no, we're gonna let you guys marinate in this episode. All of its juices. We're mm. gonna slake your thirst Ooh. for. Oh, I love that word. That's such a good word. It's, Thank you. It's all yours, my friend. Oh my god. And if you ever forget it, it's in the dictionary. Well, I think two can swim in this slake. This slake is oh, big enough yeah. for the two of us. That's how I slake it. <laughs> mm. I don't know. Don't forget to slake and subscribe, guys. All right? All right. All right. That's enough. Okay. And that's the episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening, watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, leave a review, follow Gavin, support him, and follow me. Give me all the love that you have to give. You know, you might think, hey, I want to leave some for my husband or my wife. Nope. I'm a greedy little love sucker, and I suck all your love. I suck you dry from all your wet, soppy love. That's what I'm here for, and so that's why I'm always moist 
on the inside because it's just love from others just loads of love thank you all for all the love that you guys have given me and i appreciate you and i will let you have a pleasant evening morning noon time tea time and that could be a tea time if you're going to go golf or have a spot of earl gray you guys <laughs> you guys are amazing i love you big old smooch right on the gooch Mwah. love you